Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very happy to be joined by Dr. Thomas Verheyen. Thomas got his bachelor's, master's, and PhD from KU Leuven in Belgium. His doctoral research focused on supramolecular catalysis, as well as the development of new methods in transition metal catalysis, supported through high-throughput experimentation techniques. He spent time working at Johnson & Johnson in Beersa, Belgium, and he also carried out a research fellowship at the University of Ottawa, where he worked in the group of Professor Stephen Newman. Now Thomas is a postdoctoral researcher in the Respiri Consortium at the University of Antwerp, where he studies antibacterial agents and medicinal chemistry. And with that, I'll hand it over to you, Thomas. Thank you very much for joining us today to share your work. Thank you, Matt, for the kind introduction, and thanks to all of you for watching this Research Spotlight episode. The research I'll be presenting today was part of my PhD and was performed at the University of Ottawa in Canada in the Newman Research Group. In order to reach a goal in a sustainable way, we should use as little as possible resources. This also applies to the synthesis of complex molecules. An ideal synthetic approach would consist out of a single step rather than a multi-step approach. The idea is illustrated here by the maze, where the most efficient route would be a direct route from the beginning to the end point, rather than the long way through the entire maze. While significant advances in efficient strategies and technologies have and are being developed to access complex molecules, organic synthesis is still considered highly labor and resource intensive. A particularly weak area in present-day synthesis of molecules is redox economy. For instance, the addition of Grignard reagents to aldehydes is among the most important carbon-carbon bond forming reactions. The protocol is shown here in the grey box. However, as we can see, the aldehyde compound often needs to be synthesized by oxidation of a more abundant alcohol precursor. Furthermore, the Grignard reagent must be prepared by reduction of an organohalide with stoichiometric magnesium. Subsequent manipulation of the product may also be required. For instance, another oxidation is required if a ketone product is desired, culminating in three redox steps required for only one desirable carbon-carbon bond formation. This classic route relies on well-established and reliable transformations, but exhibits poor efficiency due to the step count, poor chemoselectivity and generation of stoichiometric waste products. Given the importance of this common route, we wanted to find a better protocol. We hypothesized that a powerful strategy to overcome the poor step economy of this classical synthetic sequence could be achieved by the incorporation of an oxidation state manipulating step into a single catalytic cycle as shown in the green box. Apart from a direct route to the desired product, several additional benefits, such as a potential high chemoselectivity and reduced waste, would make this a very useful and attractive carbon-carbon bond formation protocol for the synthesis of ketones. In fact, the idea of incorporation of oxidation state manipulating steps into a catalytic cycle has been applied in the field of hydrogen borrowing and related hydrogen transfer strategies. In hydrogen borrowing, as shown here, a metal source is used to activate the starting material in situ. The activated intermediate reacts with a suitable partner. Finally, the metal returns the hydrogens and the final compound is formed. In the second example, we highlight the pioneering work by Crichet and co-workers. In the example shown, a redox-triggered carbonyl allylation is achieved by a reaction between a catalytically generated nucleophile-electrophile pair. In this work, they also show that the oxidation state of the starting material and product could be manipulated by the inclusion or exclusion of a mild reducing agent such as isopropanol. It is important to note that the achievements in the field of hydrogen borrowing and related hydrogen transfer strategies mainly rely on transition metals like ruthenium, iridium and rhodium as illustrated by the examples shown. In contrast, the incorporation of oxidation state manipulating strategies into nickel-catalyzed cross-coupling reactions is rare. This is especially important since the methodology presented today builds further on previous work conducted in the lab of Newman. Assisted by high-throughput experimentation equipment, a cross-coupling between aldehydes and organotriftates for the synthesis of ketones was found. The reaction was only successful with nickel as transition metal, while other metals gave no reaction. Based on mechanistical experiments, the reaction is believed to follow a catalytic cycle similar to the Hex cycle as shown here. 
While useful, there were several issues observed related to the use of aldehydes as starting material. For example, accessibility, stability, and dimerization site reactions when using aldehydes were observed, limiting the application potential of the protocol. Inspired by recent efforts in borrowing hydrogen and related chemistry, we sought to utilize primary alcohols in combination with a hydrogen acceptor as cross-coupling partners in catalytic ketone synthesis. By doing so, we also hope to overcome the issues related to the use of aldehydes as starting materials in the redox neutral protocol previously discussed. Despite only a limited amount of reports on nickel catalyzed hydrogen transfer protocols, we started the search towards suitable reaction conditions. We began by investigating the reaction between benzyl alcohol and phenyltriflate with inclusion of a hydrogen acceptor, a base, a nickel source, and a ligand. The best combination, shown in the scheme here, involved nickel cot and trifos as the catalytic system, tetramethylpiperidine (TMP) as the base, and acetone as a hydrogen acceptor. Under these conditions, benzophenone was isolated in a 91% yield. Several important conclusions were made during the optimization studies. For example, the use of a pseudohalide with a non-coordinating triflate group was critical. Traditional organohalides provided only traces of product, and alternative pseudohalides provided only moderate yields. We also noticed that lower equivalence of triflate led to reduced yields, indicating a potential secondary role as an oxidant. The reaction outcome was particularly dependent on the nature of the ligand. Only the multidentate ligand trifos was suited, as the similar DPPP only provided low yields. Other well-established cross-coupling phosphine ligands, such as BINAP or XANFOS, only gave traces of product. Similar, TMP as base was particularly effective, while inorganic bases gave lower yields. Of all the hydrogen acceptors screened, acetone was the most effective. Alternative hydrogen acceptors resulted in lower yields. The reaction temperature can be reduced to 110 degrees, with almost no decrease in yield for benzophenone and similar products. However, 130 degrees was later found to be more generally effective for challenging substrates. In order to perform the reaction without the need of a glove box, we tested several nickel-2 salts. Most nickel-2 salts were found to be ineffective, except for nickel triflate, which gave reasonable amounts of product. Recent advances, for example by Cornella and co-workers in the development of air-stable nickel precatalysts with activities similar to nickel cot, also permits manipulation without the use of a glove box. These precatalysts might also be useful for this transformation. More information on these catalysts can be found in the reference shown below. Robustness screening is a convenient method pioneered by Glorious and co-workers to evaluate the tolerance of an optimal protocol to a wide range of functional groups, as well as the stability of the functional groups to the reaction conditions. By performing a robustness screen and monitoring the fate of the additives, added important information can be gained, thus giving rapid information about the potential of the product for the application of complex molecules. For more information, I refer to the references provided below as a starting point. In our case, by monitoring the yield of the product and outcome of the additives, shown in the boxes here, important information was obtained. For example, we learned that a variety of functional groups such as nitrogen heterocycles and free NH groups were tolerated. We also concluded that several functional groups such as for example nitro and alkyne were not tolerated. Based on the fate of the additive, it was observed that nitro might act as a poison, while the alkyne undergoes hectype site reactions. With the optimized reaction conditions in hand, the scope was explored with a variety of coupling partners. Overall, 41 diverse compounds were prepared. Diaryl-ketone products were obtained from electron-neutral, electron-rich and electron-poor alcohols or triflates. Noteworthy are the high yield for the sterically hindered orthomethyl compound, the aryl chloride and the unprotected amide. Heterocyclic bearing alcohols and organotriflate were also tolerated, leading to a variety of heterocyclic products. Next, in contrast to the previously demonstrated redox neutral carbonyl HEC reaction, aliphatic alcohols were found to be excellent coupling partners. For instance, alpha primary ketones and alpha secondary alkyl could be prepared. Finally, an alpha chiral ketone could be prepared from the corresponding enantiopure alcohol starting material, 
with minimal erosion of enantio purity. Due to the functional group tolerance of this oxidative process and the availability of primary alcohols and phenols, this method is highly applicable to the derivatization of bioactive molecules as shown by the examples here. For instance, a photoactive protected tyrosine derivative was prepared, maintaining the epimerizable stereo center. Nalprone and haloperidol are two important ketone-containing antipsychotic therapeutics, which are traditionally formed from a paraselective Friedel-Crafts reaction of fluorobenzene and the corresponding acid chloride. These molecules can be efficiently prepared by the nickel-catalyzed oxidative coupling without limitations on the substitution patterns. After our optimization, robustness screening and scope, we focused on the mechanism. Several experiments were performed to gain a better understanding of the reaction. Our hypothesis involved the in-situ oxidation of the alcohol to an aldehyde, which reacts with the triflate in a subsequent cross-coupling cycle. To prove our hypothesis, we quenched the reaction under the conditions shown here at different time intervals before completion. As shown on the graph, the blue triangles which represent aldehyde intermediate can be observed throughout the reaction, but in low concentration. Alcohols, the black circles, decrease, while the ketone products, the green squares, increase over time. The steady low concentration of aldehyde is a very interesting result, since working directly from the aldehyde is feasible, but results in low yields of ketone product because significant quantities of the Tichenko and aldol side products are being formed, as shown in the scheme on the bottom. Gradual formation and consumption of aldehyde in situ, as observed on the graph, explains the high efficiency of this oxidative coupling reaction in comparison to the redox neutral carbonyl HEC previously reported by the Newman group. By working with the more accessible alcohols instead of aldehyde, we have conveniently expanded the scope of reaction partners and thus also products. In a second experiment, we investigated the role of the hydrogen acceptor and organotriflate in the in situ oxidation of alcohol to aldehyde. In order to do so, we set up the experiment shown here, where biphenyltriflate and 2 decanone were used in our optimized protocol, and their reduced products, biphenyl and 2 decanol, were quantified and compared to the amount of ketone product. As shown here in the scheme, a 72% ketone product was formed while 70% of combined reduced products were observed, thus providing a nearly closed redox balance. This result indicates these two distinct oxidative pathways as responsible for the in-situ oxidation of alcohol to aldehyde. Finally, in the last experiment shown here, a deuterated alcohol was used in the oxidative cross-coupling. Coupling with the deuterated alcohol analog provided substantial deuterium incorporation in both reduction site products, thus further confirming the results established with the previous experiment. Based on previous experience and our experiments just shown, we propose the following mechanistic cycle. We start with the initial step of the productive cycle or carbonyl hex cycle. In this cycle, the nickel zero catalyst 1 first reacts with the organotriflate to form oxidative addition intermediate 2. Normally, we would continue with the insertion of the aldehyde, however, aldehyde is not yet present at this moment. We propose that the initial formation of aldehyde happens via oxidation cycle 1. Oxidative addition intermediate 2 can react with the alcohol starting material to form alkoxide complex 3. Beta hydride elimination produces aldehyde and a nickel hydride complex 4. This can undergo reductive elimination, forming the reduced organotriflate and closing oxidation cycle 1. At this point, we can return to oxidative addition intermediate complex 2. Aryl nickel complex 2 can react with aldehyde, which is present now, via insertion to form alkoxide complex 5. Beta hydride elimination produces the ketone product and the nickel hydride complex 6. Such species are known to undergo slow reductive elimination to regenerate nickel 0, which is proposed to be the rate determining step in other nickel catalyzed HEC type reactions. Since this is most probably also the slowest step in our protocol, an alternative oxidation cycle can be initiated from nickel hydride complex 6. The hydride can reduce the acetone additive via complex 7 and undergo substitution with alcohol starting material to form alkoxide complex 8 as shown in oxidation cycle 2. 
beta hydride elimination provides aldehyde and regenerates metal hydride 6, closing this oxidation cycle. Overall, the proposed mechanism is in line with our observations made in the mechanistical experiments. Two oxidation cycles generate the aldehyde, oxidation cycle 1 and 2, which subsequently reacts in the productive cycle. The presence of aldehyde and reduced ketone and pseudohalite were confirmed by our mechanistical experiments, thus supporting our proposed mechanism. In conclusion, we demonstrated a nickel-catalyzed oxidative coupling of alcohols and organotriflates. This reaction relies on catalytic formation of two reactive species, an aryl nickel nucleophile and an aldehyde electrophile. These intermediates react via a carbonyl hectide pathway, forming ketone products. This oxidative reaction, enabled by using acetone and a small excess of organotriflate coupling partner, demonstrates an exciting interface between cross-coupling reactions and dehydrogenative activation. We believe that the incorporation of mild oxidation state manipulating steps into diverse transition metal catalyzed coupling reactions has much unrealized potential for efficient chemical synthesis. For example, an interesting protocol for the remote sp3-CH acylation of olefins with primary alcohols was reported recently by Xia and co-workers. This efficient transformation involves hydrogen borrowing, hydrometallation and metal walking steps all catalyzed by ruthenium as a sole metal. The resulting 1,3-diketones are useful intermediates in the synthesis of, for example, nitrogen-containing heterocycles with medicinal applications. In the second recent example, Xu and Yang report the synthesis of alpha mono related ketones by a nickel-catalyzed dehydrogenative cross-coupling reaction cascade between alcohols and olefins. This is an interactive protocol as it uses readily available, cost-efficient alcohols and olefins and provides selective aerolation without over-aerolation or site selectivity issues. In this session, we have discussed an oxidative transformation. However, when looking at this scheme, one could also consider a reductive variant. This would start from the aldehyde oxidation level, involve a reductant and a halide cross-coupling partner, resulting via reductive carbonyl aerolation in secondary alcohols. This could be an alternative, more efficient route towards secondary alcohols in comparison with Greenyard addition. Indeed, these reactions were reported by the Krishi and the Weiss group as shown here. In the report of Krishi and co-workers, rhodium and a phosphine catalyst are used with sodium formate as the reductant. In the report of Weiss and co-workers, nickel is combined with a bipyridine or piboxy ligand with zinc metal as the reducing agent. Both our approach and the results here show the potential to achieve efficient synthesis with large functional group tolerance without needing pre-methylated reagents. I would like to thank the Newman Group for hosting me during this collaboration, special thanks to Lars, Eric and Gia for their help on this project, and Steve for his support and advice. Additionally, I would like to thank my PhD host group, the Wim de Boeggrave Group of the KU Leuven, I would also like to recognize different financial supports received for making this collaboration and my PhD research possible. Finally, a thanks to Matthew for hosting this exciting platform and giving me the opportunity to present and share my research on the Synthesis Workshop. And of course to you for your attention. Thank you for joining us for this Research Spotlight episode and thank you to Thomas for a very nice talk. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support this initiative by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast. And feel free to send us any questions and comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date and see you all next time.